Wow, what a uh, emotional day today. Um, as you know, Venus got stunned um, a little bit earlier by um, Irani. Uh, it was an emotional up and down, and everyone in the Ash Stadium was really rooting for uh, Venus. It was um, six love to Irani in the first set. Venus came back in the second set with the love six, and then it was a tie break in the third. Third, and Irani went. Went home with it, and really, the, the really the deal maker in the in the in the match today was the unforced errors. Um, Irani had 25, and Venus had 52, and I really felt like her autoimmune immune disease um, was affecting her. She looked tired. It was really a hot day, and um, but the crowd was really with her and and tried to get her going. At one point, actually, Irani did the sh sign to everyone in the crowd. She's just a fierce fighter, and um, and so she did a great, great match, and she went home with the win. Yeah. What, what, what other highlights would you want to talk about uh, of day five of, of um, uh, the U.S. Open? Any other major eye-catching event that you can pick out from today's events? Yeah, actually, Halep also. She was a she's a two seed. She also got stunned uh, today, uh, upset today by Lucic. Uh, she's actually going into the press conference right now as I'm speaking. She's in the conf press conference talking about her um, her win. She's 32 years old. She was a uh, you know a teenage phenom, and but has been off the tour and now came back and stunned Halep. She's a two seed and she had a great game, she, great match, and um, she just refused to let go. She just kept with it the whole time and she went home with a seven six six two. Um, and now, actually, Irani and Lucic are going are gonna to meet um, in the quarterfinals. From, from what you've seen so far of, of uh, the games um, at Flushing Meadows, what can you can you probably look into the future and try to see who will be playing the finals for the men, who will be playing the finals for the women, considering how the top seeds have been performing um, at the U.S. Open. Yeah, there really hasn't been any big major upsets on the men's side, except for the women. So it's really hard to say. But on the women's side, I think Serena is a is a given um, sort of uh, a favorite to win it all. She had a lackluster majors year this year, but she's been really tough this year. And the the question is, can she hold off and win, defend her U.S. Open crown now that there's been several really big time players that's come off? I think one player on the women's side to really look out for is the Canadian. Bush that played yesterday and you know she had the main event at night uh, she played too well into almost midnight at ash and she's just a really fun player to watch she's tough as nails and she's 20 years old so she's one to look out for but i think serena at the end of the day on the women's side is the favorite uh, on the men's side i think it's about federer or djokovic they're on two different sides um, djokovic is on a tougher side of the bracket but um, I really think that he's still a favorite, even though he had a lackluster summer after winning the Wimbledon. Um, a lot of people are saying that that's due to uh, getting married and having sort of a post-wedding um, celebrations this summer. But, um, you know, he's the king of, of this hard court, and I think he's going to be really the toughest one to beat. Federer has a big chance. He's on the easier side of the bracket, they say. And um, I think that if he if he can be 33 and pull off a great um, next week and a half, I think he has a chance to get make it all the way to the final. But I think Djokovic is at the end of the day he's the favorite on that side. Tell her, we, we side. don't want you to go, but um, we, we have to release you. But before I allow you to go, what are you looking forward to? Day six. Uh, I think Djokovic is going to be a great uh, match to watch. Uh, Serena is playing. Uh, it's just another, you know, on the women's side, there's been a lot of upsets and there's been a lot of fun young players to watch. Uh, Bouchard is coming back to watch tomorrow, to play tomorrow. And uh, Djokovic is really the, Djokovic and Songa. I, I don't know if you watched Songa's game yesterday. He's looking really hot. He had a really mm. hot summer this year. So I think he's also one to watch, watch out for Thank you, Tara, for being a part of uh, sports tonight. Uh, we'd like to see you over and over and over again. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Have a great evening. Yeah, thank you. We've been speaking to Tala Adavi of the BOA, and she's been giving us live updates around uh, the U.S. Open. Guys, you guys were just looking at Tala while I was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have loved to speak with her. Particularly, Saeed. Uh, it's it's, it's not <laughs> <laughs> It's not uh, it's, uh, I think that's the way it should I, be. I, think I didn't want the call to stop. I was just looking at I was like, Jane, <laughs> Anyway, okay. All right. Let, let's, let's pause a little bit. Let's, let's talk um, a little bit of, of golf.
and um, tell you about uh, the um, MBC Centenary Golf Classics. About 120 golfers um, will be taking part, drawn, of course, from different golf clubs across Nigeria. They will be taking part at the Centenary Golf Classics. That will be holding at the Kedja Golf Club uh, between November 28 and 29. The format of the event will be 10 holes and four-person team event. Let's just allow you to listen. Uh, so people talk to, it, talk to us about it, and then we'll come back for more uh, on Sports Tonight. By the time we return, Tunde Ogunsheku will be here on Sports Tonight. Join us again. This is a tournament that is coming up on the 28th and the 29th of November 2014. And let me quickly say this at this point, that part of the money generated from sponsorship, 10% of this fund will go towards a charity. And they will hope that after this first tournament, it's something that will become part of the program. I can invite my uh, friends and I, the, the captains from other golf clubs in Nigeria, like Ikoi Golf Club, Abuja, IBB Abuja, and uh, etc., to join us uh, during the competition. Daily, our world changes. Sometimes it could be tough to keep up with these changes. Some other times, communicating these are even harder. Our job here on Sunrise is to break it all down for you, not just to understand, but take the right action. Sunrise, every Saturday at 9 a.m., only on Channels Television. It's time for us to uh, talk chess now on uh, sports uh, tonight. And uh, we, we've made a change, really, because uh, Tunde Ogushiku um, has joined me. Um, uh, Tunde, good evening to you. Good evening. What are we looking forward to? A lot. Uh, there's so much happening on the domestic scene and mm. at the same time on the international scene. Uh, well, uh, I guess I would have to start with the buckets, uh, ice bucket challenge. Ice, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's going on about it? Uh, mm. Fabiano Carana was challenged, and he took the challenge with the chessboard, and it was it was actually interesting to to actually see uh, chess players taking the ice bucket challenge. But uh, coming down to the local scene, the Sipan Monthly Blitz Championship mm. is going to be holding on Sunday. Okay. Uh, a lot, a lot of top players came in for the tournament last month. Uh, it holds every last Sunday of the of the month, and it was it was a very very big battle uh, the last time out where Demola Shorungbe won and came on the show to tell us a bit about it. Yeah, it was there last week. Yeah, mm. uh, the, the week before and. Well, it's, it's actually been interesting. And now uh, they are upping the prize money a bit. Uh, mm. Not much, just a bit. And it's, we are expecting top players from all around the country. Mm. So one way or the other, those that would come would come. And those that won't come well, they would, they would probably be staying very far off. Mm. And it's going to be very, very Interesting. Yeah, the Lagos Chess Classics. It's going to be holding from the 7th of October mm. to and the 10th. And international master is coming? Yeah, a number of international masters actually have uh, they've signified interest in coming. Uh, but the defending champion, international master Emzat, is going to be coming again to try and defend his title, which is, well, I am hoping he won't be able to defend the title. So that uh, probably some of our Nigerians that tied with him or some others that did not tie with him would actually uh, do, do us proud in the country when everything kicks off mm. on the 7th. Uh, it's, it's actually something that we are, a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, still, there will be no prize money for the female section. Uh, they call the they call it an open a, an mm. open tournament. So one way or the other, they said the organizers said that there's not going to be a specific prize for the uh, female section, but there's going to be uh, several category prizes. Mm. Uh, that's the 
on rated prices, then... Uh, so they don't lump everybody together. Exactly. Everybody plays everybody. Mm, mm. So one... But then you have to reward everybody... According, according to, the to abilities. their abilities, mm, exactly. Mm, mm. Uh, the first prize, which is the major prize, will, will be $6,000. Uh, well, we are, there are going to be several other prizes along, mm, along the line. Mm, mm. Uh, the Ocean State Trials for the National Sports Festival actually kicked off today. Okay. Uh, a number of players have turned in to Ocean State to go and see if they can qualify. Make the team. Make the team. And be, a, and be at the National Sports Festival. Uh, exactly. Uh, Edo State female first trials also ended today, as in several, several offsets. Uh, one of our top play, top female players, uh, Vivian Zayem, could not qualify. Mm. As in, this is someone that has been in the chess industry for a long mm, time. Mm, mm. and. The small girls are just... Are taking her out. As in, honestly. Embarrassing the, the old lady. <laughs> Let, let's talk about it. Now you're talking about youths. Yes. And how the young ones are knocking off, knocking off the senior ones. Exactly. Let's talk about the World Youth Championship. Yes. That the, is taking place in, in uh, uh, Durban. Yeah, Durban, South, South Africa. Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually one of the few times that we have had uh, the World Youth uh, Chess Championship or Chess Championships actually holding in Africa. And South Africa has always been at the heart of the whole thing because they have invested a lot of money in, in chess and in their sporting activities, not just football, that is. So one way or the other, the World Youth Chess Championship would be holding in uh, South Africa, Durban, uh, from, the, from the 18th of September to the 30th of September. And, well, we are hoping that Nigerian uh, youths, mm. the Nigerian Sports Federation will be able to sponsor a few Nigerian youths uh, under 18 and lower to the tournament. Mm. Uh, this is one of the ways that would give all these boys uh, mm. some form of experience that okay. they need to gather in order mm. to step up their game because we have a lot of talented youths, young, yeah. young I chaps. Need let, let's, go for him. let's go for him, Tunde. Yes. Uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about this guy, Fabiano. Fabiano Carana. Yeah. Yeah. He was the one that took the ice bucket challenge, and now he's mm. still leading the, the park at the Sinkfield Cup uh, mm. that is holding at the USA. Uh, it it's has been very, very interesting because the guy has just been in superlative form. He has won his two games. Meanwhile, the world champion, uh, Magnus Carlsen, also playing in the same tournament, has only been able to draw his first two games. Well, in several if, tournaments that Fabiano Carana and Magnus Carlsen has been playing in mm. this year, uh, Carana has been leading, mm. but one way or the other, he just eventually drops. Mm. Well, I am hoping... He drops it. <laughs> okay. but, but let, let's talk about Ma Magnus. Uh, what, what's going on? What's the politics well, around Magnus? What, well, what's the battle with, uh, it seems, with the international body? It seems uh, Magnus Carlsen is trying to play another, uh, how do we call it now, another Gary Kasparov. Mm. Uh, he wants to create another faction. Well, like not, we have the football, the uh, <laughs> Nigerian football. Not necessarily, he, wants to, he wants to bring it not, to chess. Not, nece chess. not necessarily creating a faction, but uh, he's just trying to see if there is a way that the uh, world governing body for chess can mm. move the world championship a, a bit further. Mm. A bit further. But uh, the FIDE president, Ilumzinov, is saying no, that he's not going to uh, bulge on the date and the mm. time that everything has already been set. Uh, but, and if Carlson does not sign the contract by the 31st of this month, that is on Sunday night, mm. that is going to, well, forfeit his championship. Mm. Tune, thank you so much for, for your time. We look forward to seeing a lot more next week. No but let them keep the politics out <laughs> and focus on the board. Can we actually keep the politics, politics out, out of the sports? But Lalo when money. All. Is involved. Gets involved. Exactly. All right, let, let me read a few comments on Twitter um, to wrap up uh, sports tonight this Friday. Uh, Kemi Alaga at Alaga Kemi says, if FIFA Hammer eventually falls on Nigeria, we know those to hold responsible. Uh, that's what he says. And uh, Henry Uwayanwu says, what about the Giwa faction sending a clip of their own Congress to, the, uh, to, to FIFA? Will they hold water? Uh, if they can get the clips, clips. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure they will want to send the clips to, to FIFA really because... I saw a little bit of it. Um, um, Ajadiola Dimeji says the sports minister needs to be warned or else FIFA's ban is uh, 
um, looming on Nigeria. I like this one. This is coming from Chartered NG Dreamer at uh, Zion One. It says, you can never play the devil's advocate better than Al Pacino. <laughs> it says the minister has not acted in good faith. He's running a script. Uh, Doing Kasumo says the minister's endorsement of illegality is a big shame. Uh, lack of knowledge of the statutes by Giwa is even more shameful. Wow, that's huge. And uh, Enebeli Kenneth says, why is FIFA delaying to ban 